Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from RC Mojo. We've finished the XV01 chassis, so it's time to sort out the body. This is one of those things where every step has at least three different methods. So what you'll see in this video is the way I tackle it. Don't take it all as absolute. When you've done a few bodies, you'll pick up your own methods. We will roughly be following the instructions, so we best put step one up in the corner and get going. So, step one. Trimming and painting. Um, I think we'll probably split that up. So, step 1A. Trimming the body. Now, Tamiya have done a rather nice thing for those of you who don't like cutting wheel arches. They pre-cut them. Fairly accurately too. Lovely. I like to draw a line with a fine tip marker around the body where I want to cut. This makes it stand out so you can't accidentally start following the wrong bit. Next, I use a pair of scissors to roughly cut the flange off the body, keeping a couple of millimetres away from the line. This will make it easier to get in for accurate trimming. Now I cut the wheel arches. Normally I would be scoring a curve with a knife. But, as the curves are pre-cut, you can just use a pair of scissors to snip them free. The hard bit now, go around the body, trimming right up to the line. Keep the line smooth, inside corners want to be curved to avoid cracking, and always remember you can remove plastic, but you can't add it back. So, if you're unsure, be a little conservative with the cuts. When it's nicely trimmed, use some garnet or wet and dry to smooth all the edges as they can end up being a bit sharp. Okay, ideally for this bit you're going to need a body reamer, which is like a normal taper reamer but with a sharp point. Even better if you have a stepped body reamer. I don't however, so I'll be using drill bits. It does take a bit longer, but the result is just the same. Start by popping the body over the body post on the chassis and mark the dimples that match up. The body has dimples that match a couple of different chassis, so make sure you get the right ones. When you're all marked up, grab your whole maker of choice. If it's a body reamer, pop the point into the dimple, press firmly and turn. When it breaks through, press very lightly and keep turning until the hole is at the size listed in the instructions. If you're using drills, start with a small 1.5mm or so bit, best if it's in a pin chuck, and make a pilot hole. Then swap to a bigger bit in a hand drill and go up in steps until you are at the required size. Going up in steps helps stop the hole from wandering. You also need to drill out the holes for the headlights, wing mirrors and rear wing. Check the hole sizes in the instructions before each drilling, as of course you can make the hole bigger, but you can't make it smaller. When all the holes are holes, flip the body over and very carefully cut away any swarf with a good sharp knife. I say carefully, as it's easy to accidentally cut right into the edge of the hole, so take it slowly. I think it's time for a test fit. Drop the body onto the chassis popping the posts into the holes, and oh no, there's a problem. The bumper doesn't fit, but tell me I have a fix for that in step 5. Cut it, so it does. <laughs> step uh, 5, bumper trimming. Get the pen out again, and draw around the front of the body where it meets the bumper. Take the body off, remove the four screws holding the bumper on, and remove the bumper. With a preferably steel rule, line it up along what will become the front edge of the bumper, use a nice new X-Acto type blade and cut the front off. It may take a couple of sweeps, just keep the knife straight and keep going until it comes away. Then trim the excess off the ends. Pop the bumper back on the chassis, don't bother with the screws just yet, and drop the body on to see how it fits. If there's still some interference, keep trimming it bit by bit until it's a good fit. It may take a few goes, but in the end, the body should slide right on. Oh, rider delta! <laughs> to fix that, we need to pop in some body clips for the body to rest on. So hold the body in roughly the right position, and count how many holes from the top the clip needs to go. Remove the body, and pop the clips in. It should now sit nicely on the posts. You'll want something to go between the clips and the body to avoid scratching the paint, but we'll sort that out later. From step 5 to step 4, 
kinda. <laughs> We're going to dry fit the accessories as it's easier to see how well they'll fit before we paint the body. So, starting with the chrome grill, H1, remove it from the sprue and clean up the edges. To fit it, we're going to need two J6s from the white tree and a pair of 10mm self-tappers. Slot the grill into the recess at the front of the body, pop the two J6s on and the two screws and tighten them up. The screw should just about bottom out without the body warping. If they don't go on right, have a close look at the two holes in the body and adjust as needed. Now the wing mirrors. From the J tree we need parts 1, 2, 3 and 4. Make sure you keep track of which is which as they all have a specific place to go. To fit them we need two of the small 8mm self tappers. To make it a bit easier, pop the screws in a couple of turns before you fit the mirrors to the body and then take them out again, just to make a thread. Pop one of the mirrors into the hole in the body and turn it to the right angle. Check the position and trim the hole if it's too far off. Don't trim more than a millimeter or so though, or the mirror will end up loose. Now fit the spreader plate and the screw. Do it up until it bottoms out. The assembly should grip the body, making it stiff to turn. Fit and check the other side in just the same way. The rear wing next. Grab part J5, two J7s, two O-rings and two small body clips. Pop the wing into the holes in the body, flip it over and pop the two J7s on. If you look carefully, you'll see I've actually put them on upside down. So use your imagination and imagine they were the right way up. Slide the O-rings on and now you need to pop in the body clips, which can be quite tricky. Best to practice now while there's no paint to scratch. Check to see if the wing's straight. If it's bowed, the holes are too close together, so you'll need to fettle them a bit. When everything is nicely attached, take a moment to admire the transparent delta. Moment over, take all the accessories off and meet me on the other side. Step 1. B. <laughs> Cleaning and masking and painting. If you want the paint to stick and not flake off, you need to meticulously clean the inside of the body. Lots of dish soap, warm water and a plastic nail brush. Get right in and scrub. When it's nice and clean, rinse it thoroughly, shake most of the water off and pop it in the airing cupboard. While it's drying, you can get the window masks ready. They come on a single sheet, which you need to cut out. So, with a good pair of scissors, roughly cut out the masks, keeping away from the lines. Once they're all in more manageable pieces, very carefully cut them out following the lines. Take it slow. Sometime later, you'll have a nice set of masks like this. If you took your time, the body should be nice and dry. Give it a quick check to see there's no water. If not, give your hands a wash and we'll start applying the masks. The big thing here is keeping the inside of the body super clean. So try and avoid touching it as grease from your hands will stop the paint sticking. Grab one of the masks. We'll start with the windscreen. Lay it over the inside of the body with the backing down onto the plastic. Flip the body over and check the sizing. The decal sheet comes with the window surrounds, so we want the mask to just make it to the ridge around the window. This looks good enough. Now the tricky bit. Peel back some of the mask, trim some of the backing off, and lay the mask back down. Offer it up to the inside of the window, keeping the exposed mask away. Carefully line up the side with the backing on, and press it down all the way across. The exposed mask should end up being stuck in the right place. Now, carefully remove the rest of the backing and press the mask down, working it top to bottom as you go across. You should be left with a nicely lined up mask without any creases. Lastly, you need to seal the edges. Use a super clean fingernail to burnish all the way around. If you look in through the outside, you'll see which bits you've missed. Keep going until it's all stuck down. The other window masks go on in exactly the same way, and since this body is painted in a single colour, there's no other masking to worry about. Simple. Just remember, if your hands start to feel in any way greasy, give them another wash. And speaking of the paint, you need some white paint for polycarbonate. There's a few brands to choose from, but the Tamiya stuff is always nice to use, so we will be using Tamiya PS1. The first step in painting using a rattle can is to give it a shake. Keep shaking it. When you think it's mixed, shake it some more. 
keep shaking, don't stop. <laughs> keep going for at least a minute and more is better. When it's as mixed as it's going to get, take the paint and the body to a well ventilated area, which this isn't, so I won't be spraying on film. For the first coat, you only want a really thin coat, almost a dusting of paint. You want to aim for the edges of the mask to seal the edges. Again, be really light with the paint. Keep the can six to eight inches away from the shell. When you've done, the body should be mostly transparent. Leave it in a room temperature environment for at least 45 minutes. If it's outside in the cold, it will take longer. When the first coat is nice and dry, lay a second. This time, because the mask edges should be sealed, you can do a little bit thicker coat. Try and get the paint nice and even. The body should still be quite see-through though. Again, leave it to dry. You can get away with a bit less time now there. For the third coat, it's more of the same. By now the body should be almost opaque. Make sure you get some paint into all the nooks and crannies, above the number plate, around the grill recesses, and inside the tow hook. For the last coat, build up the paint around the wheel arches and the sills. This is where things tend to rub, get hit by rocks, twigs, and generally get abused, so a bit more paint will help against damage. Being a solid colour and not metallic, there should be enough paint on the shell by now. If not, keep building up the layers until you're happy with it. When you are, leave it for a few hours for the paint to mostly set, then grab a knife and begin the mask removals. Use the blade to carefully pick up a corner of the mask, then peel it off. Be careful not to touch the paint yet, as it will still be just a little soft under the surface. Keep going until they're all off. Now the boring bit. You need to let the paint set completely. Overnight indoors normally does the trick. Don't try and rush it. Shortcuts often lead to a less robust finish. Be patient. Step 2. Decals. Or decals, if you prefer. Like the masks, you need to keep your hands grease free if you want them to stick, so keep them clean. Each decal has a number, so you look at the instructions, find the number of the decal you want to fit, then locate it on the decal sheet and cut it out. Start by roughly cutting it out, leaving a big border and including the number. You can get a few ready at a time. When you've got some cut out, you need to carefully trim away as much of the surrounding unprinted decal as you can. The body has an overspray film, so that needs peeling back. To help keep the body clean, only peel it back a bit at a time, uncovering only the area you're working on. For the larger decals, treat them like the masks. Partially peel the backing off, cut the end off the backing, and lay it back down. Position the decal and press it down, then peel the rest of the backing off and smooth down the decal. The front bumper is good practice, as it's all separate decals, so keep going until it's fully populated. It should end up looking something like this. Right, the next bit will really test your patience. Large decals over complex curves. A complete pain in the rear. And I will say, I didn't get them 100% right, but close enough. In hindsight, some heat to soften the decal would have helped quite a bit. Anyway. Peel back the film from the wing, take the top decal and remove a bit of the backing, line it up over the wing and press down the exposed part. Peel back the rest of the backing and smooth down the decal. Here you can see the ripples. There's no way that's ever going to lay flat. I think if you were to warm up the decal and put some tension into it, there's a good chance it wouldn't ripple like that. However, this is a runner, not a shelf queen, so we'll take a knife to it and overlap. If you keep smoothing it down, it looks perfectly acceptable. The lower decal goes on in much the same way. More complex curves, so I think heat might have helped a bit here too. But I don't think the final result looks bad at all. There is of course the other wing and the rear quarters to do too, which I've done. I've also put some of the other decals on, and I think it's starting to come together nicely. Next are the window surrounds. Carefully cut them out and stick them on. Don't forget, if your hands are getting greasy, give them a wash. Almost there, looking pretty cool. Just the rear is a bit sparse, but we'll soon fix that. And we're done. The race cars always have a load of decals, and some that are a pain to fit. 
but I think this has come out okay. Step 4, again. <laughs> Grill now, and we'll take some Tamiya X18 semi-gloss black and a brush. You need to paint the grill black, leaving the lights and grill surround in chrome. It's a bit tricky, but well worth getting it right, so take your time and build up the paint in nice thin layers. You also need to apply the thin red line around the inside of the grill surround. The body comes with some thin decals, but I think it's easier just to use the red paint. Just like the last time we were at step 4, you need to pop the grill into the recess on the front of the body, pop the two J6s on, and screw in the two 10mm self-tappers. Since we've already done the test fit, everything should go together perfectly. Now for the wing, which is supposed to be painted white, seems a bit pointless, so I'm leaving it in plain white plastic. The wing needs a martini racing decal on each side, so pop them on using the same technique as the other decals. Slot the wing into its holes, flip the body over and fit the two O-rings. Then slide on the J7s, this time the right way up. Then pop a small body clip in. These can be tricky, so be careful you don't slip and damage the paint. Next fit the wing mirrors. They're supposed to be painted black, which I'm sure would look great. But being where they are, on the first rollover they'll get scraped, showing the white plastic underneath. So I'm leaving these white. Just as before, pop the mirrors in through the holes in the body, slide on the J3 or J7 mounting plate, and screw in a small 8mm self-tapper, and repeat for the other side. And now the last bit of the body, the Lancia grill badge. Savour the moment. I think we're done with the steps now, so I'll get rid of that. Right, the body clips being metal aren't really something you want rubbing up against the inside of the body. So I always find some scrap foam, in this case some sticky back sound insulation, and I make some buffers for the body to sit on. As well as protecting the paint, they also stop the body from rattling around. Pop one on each corner and fit the body. Pop a body clip on each of the posts and, uh, well, we're done. As in, we are complete. There's nothing else to do. It is ready to run. Thanks for watching. I hope it was fun. I certainly enjoyed it. Look out for some bashing videos. There's no ETA though, as the weather has been a bit crap and puddle dodging really isn't any fun. Maybe I should have fitted waterproof gear. Hmm. Anyway, the like is always appreciated. If you want a heads up when we do the next video, please hit subscribe. There's also Twitter and of course the website rcmojo.com.